Hey folks, Harland here with a couple of quick announcements before we start today's podcast. First of all, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being part of this wacky highway. Really appreciate it. And as we grow, we've started to attract some sponsors and uh, they're really helping with, uh, with our little Engine That Could podcast here. They help keep the lights on. They help keep things flowing. So uh, really appreciate your understanding and your patience. And thank you to our sponsors who are tuning in and uh, helping us out. And, uh, and also today we have uh, a little uh, bonus material at the back end of the show. I call it the bonus bacon. What else would I call it? Um, and what it is, it's um, I do these wacky kind of interviews where I phone myself and do characters. And today is one of my favorite characters, uh, Colonel, Lieutenant, uh, French Commander, uh, Staff Sergeant, uh, Tom Dowdy. He's a military guy and he's checking in on all the goings on in the world, especially the tensions in, in the Middle East and people talking about World War III about to break out. Uh, so listen to the interview at the back end of the podcast. It's audio only. There's no uh, visual. It's just me doing an interview. And uh, basically, I jump back and forth between character and myself. And uh, it's all improv. There's no, nothing's written down. I just, I just turn on the microphone and go. There's no editing. It's all just one take. And uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the interview. Um, also, lastly, um, just uh, as the holidays approach, I do this thing called Cameo. It's, uh, it's uh, Cameo.com or it's Cameo on your, on your phone app. And it's really fun. I've done it myself. This is why I'm endorsing it. I, I did it with a, a celebrity that I loved, an actor that I loved growing up watching. And basically what you do is you can go on Cameo, type in my name, and basically um, you can have me do a personalized video for you for the holidays, for your birthday, for any type of event. And uh, it's really fun. I try to make it as fun and, and personalize it as much as I can for you and uh, hopefully put a, a, a special laugh on your face, a smile on your face. Um, and that's the uh, Cameo app at, uh, at your uh, app store on your phone or whatever. So with all that said, um, folks, buckle in. Here we go. It's another amazing ride down the Harlan Highway. And again, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's rock and roll. Let's have some giggles. Here we go. The f turning of leaves, the changing of color is autumn. That's where that comes oh, from. Right. Oh, right. And, yeah. and the reason the leaves change colors, do you know why? I do know. Because the melatonin in the leaves gets scaggulated to the pectillin. And when the sun heats up during the uh, shorter days of the year, the magranosis happens in the crantorium. You asked. Now, in simple terms. Well, the leaves are fucking stupid and they die. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. It's a cool piece. It is a cool piece. Uh, you don't wear cans or do you? It's up to you. Yeah, uh, off and on. Depends on uh, when this episode comes out, I guess. I haven't determined whether when this one's coming out. It kind of depends on how it goes. Um, but let's uh, let's throw it around. Let's kick it around. Yeah, let's kick it on down the hall and kick see it what on happens. Down the hallway. So, uh, yeah. So people Go leave ahead. comments sometimes. They're like, "Oh, you have the headphones reversed. Left is right, right is left." Right. But the thing is, these are mono anyway. So I like to have the wire just be. Oh, okay. just So it's not crossing me. You know, if you I learned this from my sister. If you soak in a nice oatmeal bath, mm -hmm. it helps with mono. If if you it, it, it kind of helps. It gets rid of it. I didn't think that you could get rid of mono. You like can that. if you take take a night. You're supposed to take a bath in oatmeal. Oh, you pulls turn it the out. wire around. That's how you do it. Yeah, well, I was talking about mono headphones as in not not stereo, just single channel. Oh, I thought you were talking about mononucleosis, the kissing disease. What does bathing in oatmeal do, and does eating oatmeal help? No, I guess it's just when you bathe in it. The uh, Corinthian uh, 
uh, Corleonks uh, come out and, well, you're going to. Don't get mad at me for being impressed well, that you know science. Well, it's a medical science. So. Yeah, it's one of the bigger sciences. Yeah. I just think that's cool. Isn't that you, cool? You know a lot about that stuff. It's just a side thing. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I just, uh, some, some people have hobbies, play darts or uh, collect shells. I just like me medical terminology. Mm -hmm. uh, your epidermis is showing. Oh, that's embarrassing. So you know what epidermis is? Of course. It? I know what all these, I know what cor cor Corinthian uh, uh, and epidermis and... Uh, Okay. Coriolosis. Let me just, because I, I feel Durolitis, like. Okay. menstruation. What's what, epidermis then? Your if, skin. Okay. Top layer of the skin, technically. What's the next layer? A coriot. And the one under that? I don't remember. What is it? Salanthriod. 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 Yeah. There's like seven layers. Yeah. You know the seventh? Porous. That's no, why. No, that's six. Seventh is mozzarella. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hit the theme music, guy. Hey, welcome to the Harlan Highway Podcast. I like to say it in Cajun. I have a lot of Cajun uh, viewers. Yeah. Welcome to the Harlan Highway Podcast. On, uh, and this is my special guest, uh, Rick Glassman's here. Ricky, can I call you Ricky or is yeah. that... Ricky Glassman's here, gang. Yeah, and uh, welcome back, buddy. It's a pleasure to be here. This is your third your third visit, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Let me put the music up. Yeah, it's my third visit here. Yeah, our fifth podcast together because you've come on mine twice. Um, been on mine twice. <laughs> well. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. Um, how are you, guy? It's such a treat to see you. Why'd you do that? Sorry, what'd you? I didn't hear you. What'd you well, say? Why'd you put your hat back on? St my hair's still wet. Oh. So I like to have a dry in a hat. S okay. Why don't you like wet hair? It's not that I dislike wet hair. Yeah. It's that I want my hair to dry a certain way, and when I dry it with a hat, it tends to hold the curls better, less frizz. Oh, really? Yeah, I actually like my hair the way it looks when it's wet, believe it or not. Huh. But then when it dries. I, do you have a natural curl? That's the thing. Oh, you're so lucky. I use Jerry Curl. Have you ever seen this stuff? Like uh, from uh, Soul Glow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I use. I used to use that all the time. God, I love it. Just the, 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 gives me a crisp whip. Gives me a, a little whip to my curls. What kind of car do you drive? Uh, well, interesting story. I recently uh, crashed my car, so right now I'm Ubering. What was your car? <sighs> Prius. Oh, that's a crisp wisp. Whips. Whip. Say it again. Wisp. No, say the car. Oh, Prius. Now that's a crisp whip. I don't get it. People call their cars whips. They do? Mm -hmm. Well, I call mine a Prius. I don't think it was a, who makes the whip. It's a term for like nice whip. Like no. like shoes, like nice sneakers. I don't think that's a term, guy. I think you might have made that up. A whip? No. Do people call their cars a whip? I don't think they do. Can we? Yeah, just the lynch of the word whip in reference to a vehicle uh, is a rich one, like a nice car. Okay, well, I clearly said I had a Prius, which is the farthest thing from a whip. It's more like a la dirty laceration that's been infected and is pussing. Now that you've crashed it, but one of the nicest cars are electric cars because they're considering the environment. Well, I didn't. I, when I, you, you say the word crash, I, what I did is I rolled it. Have you ever rolled a car? Like an oat? Yeah. It was like the craziest thing. I was flying down the 10, the Highway 10, at about, I don't know, I must have been going about 80. 80 what? 80 MPH, miles per hour. And someone, some homeless guy laid out one of those. You ever seen the Pillsbury things? You crack them and they're like the croissant rolls. Yeah. And he stretched one. There. He stretched it right across the highway. One of the, uh, like a dough? One of the dough things. And I rolled my Prius into it. And The there was car cinnamon. couldn't break through the dough? No, it just hit it and it rolled. And I guess cinnamon and apple juice. And you love cinnamon, don't you? I live for it, yeah. You know, uh, something interesting. I found out, uh, unless you don't want... Just a sec. Yeah. 
Yeah. Got it. Go ahead. I Unless you don't want this on your podcast. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that it's your birthday today. Oh, my God. Yes, it is. I had no idea. Well, you just said it was my birthday, so you must have had an well, inkling. Well, once when we walked in, I found out. So happy birthday. And I didn't really know that it was your birthday, but... Oh, what'd you I get me? something. Maybe I could just... Oh, my God. Thank you. you. Celebration of my life. Happy birthday, Harlan. What the heck? Are you cereal? Yeah, well, I know how much you love cinnamon. What? Come on. Yeah. So you just told me what's in here. Uh, no, I just... People that like cinnamon like gifts. Oh, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Wow, flowery paper. Yeah. Always wanted some. There's more. Oh, hang on. Do you want the bag back? Because these are often more, and I can tell just by the wrapping, this is more expensive than the gift. No, bag. no, you could have that. Oh, okay. Well, this is really the score. Oh, yeah. It, because these are about $6, and this clearly is probably like a $4 thing of jam or something. You listen. Well, Perth- maybe I shouldn't judge. Can I open it now? Of course. <laughs> oh my god How, figure you know what a coincidence i happen to have a cinnamon cake even though i didn't know it was your birthday well you know as if much I, as i appreciate this there's only. what the holy <clears throat> clam dip you, know, you don't eat those huh well there's here's why i won't eat this okay because there's trauma involved in this do you remember how i told you i rolled my prius uh, down the tan into a pastry when like I told you, I rolled my car. I don't remember. This is exactly what it looked like, what I hit. Look, let me show the crowd. This is what my Prius rolled into. One of the worst rolls of my life. But that doesn't mean we can't put a candle in it. Wow. Wow, dog. Whew. Do you remember the lyrics? Could you help me out? Yeah. When I, I get, get tired and feeling low, low, I hide in my music and, and start the day. A dream of a girl I, I used to know. I, I close my eyes and she I slips slip away. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Harlan. Oh, dude, can I make a wish? Of course. All right, hang on. Wait, do I have to hold it up? Here. I, I, I widened the frame a little. Okay, ready? Can I make a, make a wish? It's up to you. It's your birthday. Okay, here I go. I close my eyes. And then I got to blow it out? Your birthday. Okay. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm so sorry. I, no, I, I just... I. I've been doing breathing exercises, and I, oh. I blew it too hard. <laughs> that, was, that was a little wasteful. <laughs> oh, dude. You were working on your breathing exercises. I didn't exercises. mean to blow it so hard. Sure, sure. Oh, God. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, but great rapper. Yeah. God. Yeah, that and Eminem are my favorite. God, I just... You ever just get so excited you blow too hard? All the time. Wow. Dude, can we do something? Because speaking of birthdays, okay? Right. Uh, well, since we're on the subject. Right. Birthdays remind me of our mortality. Oh. Do you think about your mortality a lot? And I, I know this is a tough first topic to get into, but you sort of brought me here down Cinnamon Lane. Yeah, I think about lots of things. But your mortality, do you think about, is the clock ticking? How much time does the glassman have? You know what I was thinking about on my way over here? Oh, God. Is um, a lot of people look at things as um, they're going through time, right? Okay. Like like you're born, and now you're moving through time. You're getting older. You're growing. You're getting stronger. You're forgetting. You're experiencing new things. All these things. You're going through time. And I don't think that's the right way to look at stuff, because that means we're relying on time to help us grow or relying on time to help us get to where we want to be. I don't see us moving through time. I see us standing still, and time washes over us. Whoa, that's sort of poetic. So while we're standing here, if we're not moving, we're not doing anything. Time is just going past us. And this time... There's over there, there's over there. It's just going through us. And that's not to say that the, the nothing exists in this time over here or over here, yeah. but we're right here. 
Yeah. But time, even if you stand still, doesn't stand still. No, time You're, doesn't stand still. Time is what's moving. But if we stand still, we, time doesn't stop. We are here. Okay. And if there was no time, then we would just be here. Well, wait a minute. How can you say we are here? Because I was at the mall the other day, and here there was is, this map that said you are here. But that so was how that, could I be here was, if I was there? Because that was that was then. Okay. So you could be moving. Wait. You could be moving and time is moving. Okay. But we aren't moving through time. We are moving, moving through on our on. plane here. Okay. Time is washing over us. That's, wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. But do you, do you feel the talk clicking, the clock ticking? Do you? Well, I mean, feel, I had my joints hurt more than they did when I was younger. Do you think about when the day might come that? Try not to think about it too much. Uh, I uh, more uh, more like to um, just be as efficient with time as possible, knowing that we will time will be coming through us, and we will be getting older. To like, I should be eating well. Yeah, you know, I should be exercising. I should try not to be, a, be stressing. I should be getting good sleep. So you say that eating well contributes to a longer, it happier life, and yet you brought me a triple thick cinnamon fudge now, cake. That's interesting. I also think eating well isn't just eating the best ingredients; it's also eating to enjoy. And okay. as long as we're, you know, not eating cake every day, okay. But celebration, yeah, all, is another thing that could help us and make us appreciate the time and and not be so worried as it goes through. Like, oh, you know, I don't like birthdays; I'm older, but I love birthdays. I get to be with my friends i get to yeah. have a nice slice of cake well let me throw this at you because you won't hear this when you're gone and i don't want you to die i want you to live to 112 i don't want you to die either uh, n- neither of us want each other to die that that's true but the saddest part of you dying my friend is you know when you're gone you're not going to hear my eulogy at your funeral well c- i you know, I don't love this type of talk. Maybe, I know. Maybe you could give a eulogy of somebody else that's like me, so I could hear it right well, now. Uh, you mentioned cinnamon. You brought me cinnamon. Brought me cinnamon, am I correct? Mm-hmm. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Okay. Well, brought you a couple things of cinnamon. There's no, a cinnamon in there too. Well, let's focus on this. <laughs> now, hey everybody, I want to tell you about my bookie. Yeah, my bookie. I want you to skip the arguments this Thanksgiving. Skip the arguments with Uncle Dave and focus on what really matters: good food boosted odds, and hitting those turkey day parlays. Yes, picture this. Not just watching games, but turning every second into a potential win. With my bookie, that's M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E, you can stream the games and live bet them and turn any game day into a payday. Now, I don't know if you've ever bet on sports before, but it adds a whole new level of excitement to it. Every pitch, every swing, every throw, every shot. When you are placing bets on on these moments, as well as on a whole game, it just it it ups the adrenaline. It makes it uh, very exciting. Um, so, are you ready to up your game? Sign up today and make your first deposit with promo code Harland. For a sweet deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code Harlan to claim your bonus. This isn't just a promo code. It's your secret weapon to get the extra edge on the house. And don't we all want that? We always want the extra edge on the house. The best part is you don't have to be a sports whiz to win at my bookie. You can cash in on everything from politics to your favorite shows and then some. So it's way more than just sports. Bet anything, anytime, and anywhere, only with my bookie. So give it a try and up your game with my bookie. Up anything you do with my bookie. That's promo code Harland, and go get them. Win, win, win. 
I think it's interesting that we're making this relation, having this conversation, because I, in my cinnamon journal, which you know I keep under the desk here, Mm -hmm. in lieu of you leaving and not hearing your eulogy by me. Just you could say nice things while I'm here. I want to read your eulogy, guy. Okay. From my cinnamon journal, because I don't want you to miss the nice things I have to say. Okay. I also wrote stuff about you for when you die. Okay, can I go first? Or, mm-hmm. um, and the thing I like about eulogies is you can fabricate a little. Whenever you go to a funeral, right, there's always people say the nicest things about people. Yeah, they do usually say nice things. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's an opportunity for somebody to get off their chest something that was <laughs> they were feeling resentful for or that bothered them. And they could be like, you know... As lovely as Harland was at times, um, let's be honest, he could have been a real asshole. And like people are like, they're laughing. And it's a way, it's it's not just, oftentimes it's not for the person that has passed and it's Mm -hmm. for the grieving process of the people who are going through it. Well, that's not the camp that I camp in. Well. Uh, This is a eulogy that in lieu of you missing it because you pass away, hopefully at 112. Yeah. I want you to hear the words that I'm going to say that you'll be remembered by. Okay. And this is a bit emotional, but here we go. From my, right out of my cinnamon journal. I miss old slippery lips. In life, he was kind, sharing, tender, and pure. In death, he will smell and have worms. I think all of us gathered here today remember the joy in his eyes and the laughter in his heart. Old from under face never stopped giving and putting himself before others. We all know of his heroics in Vietnam, and we all know how much he hated old people. He hated old people with a passion and would go to seniors' homes, duct tape oldies into their wheelchairs, and roll oldies into walls. He loves smashing oldies through drywall. (laughs) Who can forget the many times he kicked a soccer ball? (laughs) Sorry, I'm emotional. Let me start that line again. Who can forget... Who can forget the many times he kicked a soccer ball in oldies' faces and and stuffed oldies' heads into ceiling fans. Sometimes he'd bake a full meatloaf and grind it into oldies' veiny eyes. We will miss Cinnamon Sugar Face Glassman May his soul rest in eternity in a cheap truck stop salad bar. And may oldies place lasagna on his grave and barf apple cobbler on his gravestone. Rest in peace, Huffle Stuff. And I'm glad you got to hear that. That's your eulogy. That's for you when you die. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. No one calls me Huffle Stuff. That's your nickname. it's, It's kind of psychology 201 here that you're actually fearing that you won't hear how people feel about you and how you're remembered, and you actually just read the eulogy of what you want for you when you die, and that was actually your eulogy. Something to consider. Wait. Yeah. Say that again? You're going to die, and that's your eulogy. That's what you wrote. You wrote, that's what you want people to read. So I was projecting my own eulogy on you. Yeah. So that was about me? That's how you want to be remembered or how you think you'll be remembered, yeah. You know, I do kind of have a thing about oldies. I know. Meatloaf <sighs> and the cinnamon, you know, stuff that you said is, is what you just threw on the ground. Or should I say, under us, underground. Well, I didn't throw it on there. I, I blew my candle out. Yes, and blowing I, your candle out. Once your, the flame of your candle bl- is blown out on your birthday, opposite of death day. Or synonymous wow. sometimes, if you're really thinking about... Synonymous? Synonymous. Synonymous which is the fourth layer of skin, if I'm not correct. That is correct. That is very good. 
Got little dings coming in now? Well, little. no, but I'll, I'll, do you want a ding for that? Say it again. Uh, that's actually the fourth layer of skin. And it's called... Synonymous. Right. <laughs> Thanks uh, for having me. Oh. Dude, thank you. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you. You're, you're active on the dating scene, right? Well, I have a girlfriend. Yeah, how's that? Can I ask how it's going? Do you love it? Is it, is it going great? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you've met her. We talked about her before this podcast. Lovely. She's lovely. So it seems like the dating scene, like, are you, but like, do you want to talk about, are you active on the dating scene? I went on a date recently and it was, uh, it was tough and I wanted to see, you yeah. know. Well, tell me about, tell me about your date. Well, I, I want, I was in the mood for a seafood. I like a seafood platter, a seafood buffet. Is that pulled up? Is that, are those pins up? What? Close, right there. Oh. The, the, this uh, desert thing? Mm -hmm. I like it. Why? It's, it's like it makes you feel like in Dumb and Dumber, where you're from. It also makes, it also makes me think of in Forrest Gump when he's um, with the smiley face, when, he has, when he's, he's running and you know what's they weird? give him a towel and he wipes his face and it gives him the idea for the smiley face. The it's one. funny you think of all that because whenever I turn and look at this, all I think of is I can smell body odor, like somebody's armpits or something. Oh, maybe you're smelling your right armpit. Weird. Um, but, but anyways, I went on this date to a seafood buffet. Ah. Uh, right? And have you ever had a girl, have you ever been on a date with a girl and she gets the oysters on the half shell? Turtle power. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team. Absolutely. D d d what's that mean? We're talking. Oysters? Yeah, we're talking about, it's, it's, yeah, sometimes they'll smell it, and it's like. Right. It's like, you know, sometimes you could be drinking, you, you have them at, a, at, a, at an Asian restaurant, a Japanese restaurant, they could be drinking sake. That's where you actually get Yoruko sake. It is? Yeah. What's Yoruko mean? Yoruko sake? Yeah. Do you, are you not familiar with the uh, Shredder and, and Splinter of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No. Oh. I never watched that show. Oh, yeah. Did you read the comics or play with the action no, figures? No, I didn't like it. I didn't like the... I didn't, I didn't you like were born in, may I say? I have an idea. I was not born in, may I say? I was born in Canada. But the, the, the time period, you would probably be playing with, what, like Million Dollar Man or something? What well, type of I think figures? he was the Six Million Dollar Man, not the not, Million not, Dollar not Man. Not when you were born. Well... He kept accruing... Much like the layers of, of, of your skin, you were accruing more and more millions of dollars. Well, when I was a kid, it came right out of the chute at six mil. Oh, really? That's like when people's like, oh, who is this band? They blew up overnight. No, they've been doing this for a long time. You just never heard of them before. When that show came out, it was called the Six Million Dollar yeah, Man, not got the a, Million Dollar Man. But before man. he got a show, he was just an action figure guy. Yeah, but you're not putting a man together for a million dollars, whether it's the 70s or today. You need you're a not, bigger budget. Before before the six million dollar man had all of the stuff that he had, he was a five million dollar man, and before that he was a four million dollar man. At a certain point, he was the one million dollar man, and that was around when you were born. Well, that's when he's laying on the assembly line. He's not completely assembled yet. So yeah, nineteen sixty one. No thanks, I'm busy. Um. But did you know that the six million dollar man had a, a an affair with Tron? Why did you do this? Why did you do air quotes? That's you know, gay Funny guys. Ears. Gay, you had a, you had a gay. I didn't know about that. I, I'm more into turtles. But you were on okay. a date with a woman who had a. Oh, she, it was a seafood buffet. Oh. And she was eating the oysters. Have you ever been out with a beautiful girl and she she decides she wants the oysters on the half shell? Turtle power. And they're they the world's most fearsome fighting team. You don't know that? No. Is this we're going back to yeah, that? You don't I, know that song? I don't know this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Heroes in a half shell. Turtle power. Is you, that, don't, oh, you don't know that song? You did did really know, never heard that? Never. I didn't know it. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team. When the evil shredder attacks, the turtle boys don't cut no slack. Well, uh, meaningless to me. Well, I, I had you, I have a feeling had you known about this, your date may have gone differently, but go on. Well, think about it. You've, I'm asking you, though, if you could put tur Ninja Turtles out of your head for just a second. <laughs> um... Um, have you ever sat in across from a beautiful date and she orders oysters on the half shell? No, I, maybe. Not that I recall. 
okay, well, it's obscene. It's, it looks like a giant booger, and they, put, they literally put it on the shelf, and they slurp right. it off, and it's like, you, did you really want to go home and kiss that, right. that mouth? Well, you, well, do you not want to kiss her after she eats oysters? I don't. And this what if she one, brushes her teeth? Well, this one sucked it so hard, it went up through her nasal cavity and came out her nose. Whoa. Yeah. Do you ever suck on a boob like that? Uh, when Imagine I was, putting when a, I was an infant, when I was six months old, I did. Right. It seems like you maybe have, and the fact that you don't do that as an adult, you never see a boob. Like, let's say you're sitting down and she's standing up naked and she leans over you like this and like, and there's just boobs right here. Yeah. You don't ever just go. Like an oyster on a half shell? Turtle power. I think of it more as a nipple on a milk jug. Yeah. I, I, yeah same. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. But you're not ingesting it. You don't But she suck didn't ingest them. it either. It suck. came out of her nose. Yeah, but it went in and out through her. It's like it's like a, like a recycling is, Isn't bin. that what sex kind of is, going in and out? That's true, but not over a tablecloth. It's cleaner that way. Well, I mean, God, there's customers watching, and I'm sitting well, there. Well, there's a difference between you feeling sexually uncomfortable versus not wanting to kiss her later on in the privacy of your own home. I know, but when you see, you got to admit, just give me this. Okay. An oyster on a half shell looks Don't like a giant it. booger. Yeah, I don't eat oysters. Me neither, for that very reason. But I also don't eat boogers. Well, not anymore. People eat them. When you were young, you sure ate Never, a lot. I, I really... I, I think you did. I didn't really. I may have tasted once because I know mm. that they're salty and we're going like this. Right. But no, I was never interested, curious. And I, I saw kids eating their boogers all the time. And I always thought the same thing. I don't want oysters after that. So I get what you're saying. Right? Yeah. I get the feeling you're one of those kids who stacked them and packed them, though. Like you, you, no, I actually put them in the garbage. Your boogers? Uh-huh. Like even today, I'll pick my nose sometimes. Okay. And when I do, if something comes out, I'll go and I'll put it in the toilet or in, or in the garbage. What? Even when I'm alone. Really? Uh-huh. What is a booger, by the way? Like, how is wait, it? Wait, wait. What do you mean? Well, I mean, how is it at, you know, 7 in the morning, your nose is perfectly clear, oh, and then by, by 11 o'clock, there's this giant clump in your nose. So, um, uh, our, it's making me think of um, a nutty professor, the way you said that. Because okay, of, because the clumps. Of, yeah. So... Uh, our body is a magical thing, and we are taking in lots of allergens and and dust and and right. and, and um, uh, bacteria. Okay, and our body secretes this goo, or in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would say ooze. What is it? It's mucus, isn't it? Yes, in order to like for, to catch that stuff, so it doesn't all go like a filtration system. Now, sometimes that stuff. Like when our body, when we're sick, we'll have extra mucus. It's because it's giving that to help fight more, to help filter those things out. And uh, boogers are just like some of that mucus that just gets hardened or it's just remnant remnant uh, uh, protection from your body. But I thought the ciliated hairs in your nostrils were to do that function. They filter out all the bacteria in it, the it, air. It, it, Not all. I mean, imagine imagine if, if you were to uh, have your AC uh, adjusted or your heat. You know, okay. your HVAC guy comes in or yeah. girl and like, oh, geez, well, you're not filtered. a girl. Sometimes. Well, not really. Sometimes. Have you ever had an air conditioner girl? It's always the air conditioner man. Usually is a man. Right. Yeah. So let's not uh, BS. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I have no filter except for my snot. It's just an old snot no, joke. No, I love it. You hear that down at the AC club yeah. on Melrose. Yeah. Have you ever heard that joke where they go, it's a booger, and you go, no, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. I heard anyway. that the boogeyman told me that joke about three crusts of a nipple about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So when you get your filter and it's all dirty, you need to replace it. They replace yeah. it with this filter that has lots of different things and weaves. They don't go, eh, we'll just throw some nose hairs up there. See, here's where you perplex me, because when we started about 45 minutes ago, you said you didn't know anything about medical science the way I do. No, I said and I love how much you love about it. Yeah, but you just recited, you, 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 you just schooled me on uh, mucus and I know boogers. what I know, and I know what I Amazing. know. And I also know that in order to know more, be open to listening to what other people know. And when you listen to them, when you listen to what they know, hairs. Yeah. Also, use your own critical thinking and like, okay, this is something I could retain as a maybe. Okay. And as you continue to hear more things or experience things, it's like, yeah. So that's where the saying comes from. Who knows? Because originally people didn't understand where the boogers came from. Oh, I thought it came from owls with big noses. They No, no. That was just because they go, whoo, whoo. Nose? 
Yeah. Who knows? I do think there is some similarities. That's why they didn't know, the, the kid didn't know what was at the center of the Tootsie Pop. But oh, the owl that did. Kid, yeah. Owl knows. So I'm sure there is some origins. It's all, you know, yeah. if you go back to ancient Greece, I'm sure it was all owls and nose hairs. Well, there's no going back to ancient Greece. Well, that time has washed through us already. See, this is why I have to readjust your eulogy because I Who's sit eulogy? With, well, mine. There you go. But I sit with you, and every time I sit with you, it's like I turn over a new leaf, and I learn more about you. And it's, it's like, you that's why I want you to live to 112, because you're one of my friends that it, it, just, it just keeps coming. I have another piece of information, if you'd like. I'd love that. But saying turn over a new leaf yes. is uh, oftentimes said when something's sweet. When people go, oh, that actually is the f- turning of leaves, the changing of color is autumn. That's where that comes oh, from. Right, ah. Oh. And, yeah. and the reason the leaves change colors, do you know why? I do know. Because the melatonin in the leaves gets scaggulated to the pectillin, and when the sun heats up during the uh, shorter days of the year, the magranosis happens in the crantorium. You asked. Now, in simple terms. Well, the leaves are fucking stupid and they die. They're actually quite smart. You see, well, during, during, the, during the sunnier weather, yes. um, they don't, they're able to take in the sun's energy. Photosynthesis, you're yes, familiar. Of you course guys, You've been on the red carpet a lot. Well, you've probably taken tons I of I photosynthesis. De- I haven't developed one in a long time. Well, when you're not getting as much light, when you're not yeah. getting as much uh, daylight, um, uh, the leaves are, are, are struggling to take in the energy. And, and <sighs> are you, You're familiar with Roy G. Biv, right? Well, I went to one once, but I wasn't going to take my clothes off. Right. Well, that's part of that's. It depends where you are on the spectrum. Well, I so there's red, AT&T. orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Yes. Now, green is where it's right in the middle there, and that's where many leaves are. Right. Now, as it need and the energy that bounces back off of those come from that it refracts and it shows the green. But there's the red, the orange, and the yellow that comes right before the green. And you might notice, much like this Harlan Highway um, Arizona landscape, for those of you that are watching on on YouTube or any video platform. Yellows, reds, and oranges are the colors the leaf kind of defer down to lower on the spectrum scale to try and take in as much energy as they can before they fall down, they turn over autumn. It's really interesting. Did you work at Baskin Robbins at one point? I worked at Best Buy before. Well, you know a lot of colors, guy. Yeah. I mean, it sounds to me like you were standing over like 43 flavors or something because nobody knows that much about Baskin Robbins. Well, they put just 99 flavors. Oh, well, that was back when the Million Dollar Man was around 4 million. <sighs> I, lo- I do. I really love science. I really I know, do. Me too. That's one thing we have. I think that's something that bonds us, me and you. Bonds us, me and you. I had a bonds us tree once. Yeah? Yeah, when I was in Japan. You know, it's interesting that you call it a bonds us instead of a bonds I. Well, kind I- of like how you're projecting the eulogy onto other people and not including yourself as the sole proprietor. Well, that's because I bought it a bonds eyes or us. And uh, right. what else would I call it? A bonds eye. Bonds us. So I'm on this date. Right. And she eats the boogers. She eats, well, it looks like boogers. <laughs> she slurps them off, and then she's just talking. So I'm already well, she's turned a, off. She's a girl. She's a girl. Yeah. And I'm you all. You know what girls and, and crabs have in common? Ooh. Wow. Arthritis. They both love seafood. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Wow. Wow. It's like a face show all of a sudden. Um, but here's the next step. She started talking. You know, now, now I'm watching this mouth flap that just finished sucking an oyster. And now I don't want to hear her voice because that's coming out of the box that sucked the oyster. So what do I do? I get the scallops. You ever have the scallops? I don't need seafood, really. Well, these scallops make perfect earplugs. Right, like Star Wars. So you squish them down, Uh and you stuff them in. Did she see you put scallops in your ears? No, because I told her to look behind her at the landscape of the desert. And she looked long enough for you to put um, Mm -hmm. scallops in both of your ears? Mm -hmm. And when I turned back, she was doing this, but she didn't see me do the thing. Huh. and then we got home. She insisted on coming home. She Did you wa- still have the things in your ears? Pardon me? Did you still have the scallops in your ears I when you got home? I can't hear you. What? Did you still have the scallops in your ears? Yes. 
Um, and then we got home and she wanted to have a one nighter. And I'm like, first of all, I got the oyster booger sock. I got scallop ears. And I'm like, how do I get her out of the bed? So I brought home some peeled shrimp. Right. You ever see the shrimps? Mm-hmm. And I threw them under the sheets in the dark and said, hey, by the way, I have leprosy. <laughs> well, you have to see how that's funny. Because well, the, what that implies is, one, you're telling her after she gets in bed with you. Two, she didn't notice anything. So now you want her to feel it. And what you think she's going to think leprosy, where pieces of you is falling off, yeah. is just pieces of shrimp. Right. I think that's funny. I think that's... Well, it, it was funny yet Did it worked. It worked. It and got, she believed that you had leprosy? It got her up out of there. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So, so the seafood worked against her, against me initially, but then it worked against her in the end. And that's what huh. I call a full rounded date. Whoa. Have you seen her since? Not really. I saw her at the aquarium. So, yes. Yeah. Well, how about you? Any good dates you want to tell me about? I went uh, on, uh, with my girlfriend when I was in New York to go see Gutenberg, the uh, musical with um, uh, uh, Josh Gad and Andrew. You, didn't, you sure you didn't go to see Steve Gutenberg, no, the actor? I did not go in and see that. Okay, who really wants to see that, by the way? I can do that too. Pretend I'm Andrew Rannells. No thanks, I'm busy. Man, was it good? What, wait, what? What did you say? The musical. The it's, musical. It's a musical called Gutenberg about the creation of the printing press. Oh my god! But it's a real meta version of like what musicals are supposed to be, and why creating one, and and like the whole concept is this is the only show they're doing, and they pay to rent out a theater in Broadway to put it on, and maybe a producer will like it. So it's huh. the first and only show that they've done. So spoiler alert, maybe I don't know. It's kind of the the crux of the device of it, but they don't have they're new, so they don't have any of the other actors. It's just them two. They play all the parts, huh. and they wear different hats that say the name of whoever's playing the part. So they just there's a big direction that they keep changing the hats, and that's part of the comedy of it. Wow, and uh, it's really great. What's the genius about the the printing press, but also tragic, is the guy who invented it. He never would have had to invented it, the printing press if only had learned how to write. The printing press was taking stuff that was written and letting you copy it so you don't have to keep writing. Right, but what I'm saying is he well, only... Ju- what, what, what was that? He only what was the first thing print. you just said there? He only knew how to print. Whereas Curse of Writing, if he had learned to just do that, he wouldn't have had to dwell, delve so much. That's interesting. That's something I'll dwell. think about. Yeah. You know, cursive is something we learned in school, and then they just, at some point, they just go, eh, don't worry about it. Really? What school did you go to? I don't want to tell you. Was it a boarding school? Uh, it was a boring school. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, nice! Come on, buddy. Are you? You, you might. You might want to change your socks because you just walked right into that. Sometimes when a when a real winner gets knocked over the wall, I just hit the theme yeah. song again because yeah. it feels like it's just getting started. I love science, dude. Why? What was that your favorite? Was that your thing? Was that your jam in high school? Science? No, but I do remember that uh, uh, a, a, a chemistry teacher of mine oh. once told me, "You have the mind of an elephant." And at the time, wow. you, <laughs> all right, you're right. Yeah, I just tilted my head. I saw. You, yeah, you caught me, and I hit my muff, hit my ear muff. Uh, at the time, I was a little confused because I wasn't as confident then as I am now that elephants have a really good memory. Oh. Um, but that's what he was saying. So, so, so maybe he saw me as a good student, but, that, but you know, in, in high school, all I cared about was basketball, dude. Really? Basketball and playing with friends. Is that a compliment, though, to, to, to tell someone to tell you that you have the memory of the fattest creature on planet Earth? Fat, P-H-A-T. Pretty hot and tempting. I don't know. I'm loving elephants more and more every day, by the way. No joke. Saw some guy on a, on Instagram yesterday going like, cuckoo, 
in this water and a couple of elephants that love him came over. And I'm like, I, these things are awesome, Aren't man. Aren't they awesome? You got to respect the only animal in the animal kingdom that can masturbate with its own nose. You know, I, I hear uh, there's a lot of anti-Semitism going around right now. And, are you serious? And part of it is some of the Jews have noses big enough that they actually, they, I don't, they can. Who knows? Exactly. Some Jews have big noses, and the ones that have big noses that also have a big penis, guilty, are able to fuck their nose. Is that a true thing that Jewish people have a big nose? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, that's a stereotype, and I also understand. A lot of Jewish girls um, in, uh, in do you know what uh, j- the term uh, a Jap is? Jewish American princess, I have sure you heard do. that before? Yeah. I'm not talking also about... Also a great airline, by the way. Jewish American princess? Jewish, Japanese American Jewish. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's kind of like a crossover. Yeah. I'm not too familiar yeah. with the connection of the two. But a lot of Jewish girls yeah. that are uh, the Jewish American princess type, the ones that their family comes from money, and they're, they're like in high school, they get nose jobs a lot. I remember it was uh, people said that they had uh, a lot of Jewish, pe- Jewish girls have deviated septums. Now, well, listen, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Who, know, who, know, who, who knows? Who knows? But, uh, yeah, Jewish girls like to get their noses smaller. But what is the genetic reason, if, if what you're saying is mm-hmm. accurate, that J- Jewish people have a bigger nose, what it's, is the genetic function of that? Well, because all, all species, all races have, isn't there some sort of uh, evolutionary reason yes, for that? It was to sp- so they could suss out and smell the bullshit that's being thrown around them. Right. That's why a lot of the Jews go into trade professions doctors, lawyers, things oh. where they're using their mind that right. they could travel with. So in case they have to leave Eastern Europe to come someplace else and their bookstore they can't bring with them, have a trade. So when they landed, it's a lot of trades, a lot of trades, things that are education, okay. learn, and then they're sussing up. Something about that smells like bullshit to me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What's the, what's the ratio? Because you said it's a stereotype, which means it might not be true. Well, not all Jews have big noses, and not right. all people with big noses are Jews. Those two things aren't Jewish. Right. What's the percentage then, do you think? Oh, you know, I'll tell you something. As a, as a lover of science, yeah. I understand that hypothesis is very important to discover yeah. theory, but I also understand uh, speculation does nobody favors. So That's true. I, I, I'm choosing not to speculate. Okay, okay. Because you are Jewish, but your nose is very proportioned. I appreciate it. I, I happen, I see myself in pictures. I happen to think, oh, that's a big nose oftentimes. No, no, no. Well, great. Beautiful, but also, beautiful nose. Also, big nose could look nice in somebody's face. Yeah, I have no objections to a bigger nose. You have nose objections to it, and that's why you and I are able to be friends. Well, you hit that on the nose. Mm-hmm. You uh, you like celery? <laughs> you know what I'm really I'm really interested in is celery salt. Have you ever had it? No. What is it? It's celery salt. It's something you could buy in like seasonings. What? It's salt that you could put on stuff. I found out about it in college. They put it on these uh, chili dogs I used to get. Buddy, I'm telling you, it tastes just like celery. celery. The way garlic powder, which is garlic, yeah. tastes, but celery salt, I don't believe is actually from celery. I don't know. Well, they can they can create any type of... But it's a of, natural thing. Wait. I'm so, actually going to look up where celery salt well, comes Well, then from. I guess I am too. I'm not going to have you I'll phone me on my own podcast. Where does celery salt, salt come where from? Where does celery salt... Where's the origin of celery salt? Store-bought celery salt is made from ground, ground celery, celery seeds, seeds and salt. salt on sale at that Ralph's, makes sense. Twelve ninety-nine a, a can. So it looks like a uh, ground celery seeds, seeds make celery make salt. Celery salt. Yes, yeah, celery salt. And you know what else I'm really big into right now is uh, dill. No way. Love and dill. So I get these. <sighs> there's these sandwich pickles that I like. I forgot the name of the brand, but it's these pickles that I like. And uh, in it, there's like little pieces of like you know chives and onions and some dill in the in the in the pickling yeah. vinegar, whatever right. it is. The vinegar. The, um, and uh, when I'm done with the pickles, there's these little flower leafettes. Pickle of, flowers. Of, no, no, the, it's the dill. The, the dill, the farm. And I like to put those dills yeah. on the sandwich. And I'm eating. And so now when I eat salads or anything, when I'm tasting the dill, I'm like, that's what I like. Oh, I'm loving God. dill. It's a real fresh, nice uh, herb that's with no spice. The passion in your voice on this leads me to believe that maybe somebody at this table likes to cook. Am I right? I don't know, but I say whether I do or I don't, what's the big deal? Hit the music. (laughs) 
great, yeah. great get. Nice grab. I love food. I love food. I love science. And when you put them together, what do you get? Cooking. Well, you also get a bowel movement. Well, if you take enough magnesium, hit it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but do you cook? I mean, I get the sense, because not a lot of men, grown men, talk about dill. It's as, it's as uh, elusive and, as cayenne. It's as elusive as uh, maneglia or chloride. It's, uh, I mean, and here you are, a full-grown man with a, a beige backpack on talking about dill. You know, and it got the wheels turning in my head. Who are you? What are you? I think if more men spoke Who about dill and more women spoke about HVACs, there wouldn't be so much conflict. You're right. I also want to give a shout-out to this bag, by the way, Dan Dover. Bend over what? Great bags. Well, if you bend over, you're always going to see a bag. <laughs> at least at my gym, you are. That's Dan Dover. What gym? They actually sell these well, bags at my gym. Well, let me... Dan Dover. At the gym. How do you spell it? LA Fitness. Bend over at LA Fitness, and there's a bag. Almost the same color. My, this one's a little pinker. They got great bags, dude. Real comfortable material, too. Well, it sounds like now you're doing a commercial for D-A-G-N-E Dover. Dang. D-A-G-N-E-D-O-V-E-R. Great bags. Yeah. Well, I'm straight, but thanks. You're really... You're really loved. You know, I... Uh, Thank you. I, I watch your clips and I uh, watch the podcast sometimes, and uh, and uh, uh, I see the comments on your Instagram and on the podcast. And when you come on my podcast, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there like this person is annoying, this person sucks, this person's nose too big. What's the deal with this guy? What's the deal? Yeah, but people, you're re. Go ahead. You're really loved, dude. By who? That's a big statement. Why, love is a huge word. By, by whom? My friend, whom? Your doctor. That's right. Doctor whom? Who? Whom? With an H. Cut to a clip. <laughs> and we're back. Your love, though. Everyone's Well, I love. appreciate that, but we're talking about you. And, and, okay. and uh, why do you think it is that so many people love you? Not just think you're funny, but is it is it because they, they you're so kind? Um, I don't. I can't determine how others feel about me. Well, you you could I see can't. the feedback that they're that they're giving. And well, that's very beautiful, and I'm grateful that that's the feedback. But I I can't I don't know how or why that's the feedback. But if that is the feedback, I'm I'm very happy because kindness is a big part of how I operate. Yeah, I believe in kindness. It's interesting that you're talking about feedback, feeding, eating. And some people will eat grapefruit juice, and that's sour. You're not sour. You're not grapefruit. You're grateful. And is that a conscious choice? Speak on that. Well, can I let my mother speak on that? Mm -hmm. Will you hold down the podcast for a second while I go get something very precious that my mother gave to me? Yeah. Can I'll just do a, you, I'll you, do a commercial for Danged Over Bags. Bend Over what? Danged Over Bags. Have you ever done a podcast? Because I'm entrusting you to do my, my podcast for a minute while I go get this thing about kindness. Yeah. You've done, you've done a podcast. Of course, I have my podcast. You have a podcast. You've okay. been on it twice. So you, so Take you your can, shoes off. You can handle this. For, I'm, I'm stepping away for probably 45 seconds. Yeah, to, I mean, listen. You're, look, you're, if you, you can't might do want your it, fans, just tell your me. Your fans you might want to fast it, then, forward well, through on. it because they're here for Are you. you do but it? I could handle it for a but minute. Can you do yes. it? Right. I, don't I could know do that it. You can. Well, I can Why do it. Don't you I just can admit you can't do it? care of it i will talk to them about some of the stuff that happened before we started recording i'll talk about the picture we took outside i'll talk about the beautiful view i'll talk about the drinks you gave me maybe i'll even pick up that cinnamon treat that i went and got special for your birthday i went to another store to see if they have wrapping paper they didn't i got the bag i went to another store to see if they did and the store that i went to was called stevie sister since 1994 and when I went to that store, she was so nice and helpful. I asked her name, Maya. So shout out to Maya at Stevie's sister. She gave us 
this beautiful wrapping job. I went home. I put it in my fridge with the wrapping paper to make sure it stayed fresh, even though it was another half hour or so. I put the drink I got you in the freezer, so when I brought it back, it wouldn't melt. I came back. They were like, oh, it's your birthday. Did you forget? And the people saying, Rick forgot. How did I forget? How did you even think I knew? And I laid into it. I said, oh, I didn't know it was his birthday. I kept it clean. I kept it cool. I also bought the candles. Let me tell you something. These things, do you know how much these candles cost? Very overpriced. Seven bucks and change after tax. I only wanted one candle, but the whole thing. Is that a yes? Yeah, I could do it. Okay. I'll be right back. What are you doing? Guy, what are you doing? I said to take over the uh, the I podcast, but you got up. You don't get up and leave. No, man, I was doing a little. I was doing a little scene. Well, okay. Well, should I let you finish? You sound like my ex-wife. What the hell? And Helen Hunt's fucking Helen face. Are you blocking your own camera? See, I don't think you know how to podcast. It's not about me. Have you ever been to a puppet show? People literally this hide is, behind a curtains podcast and wear a black. Show. They wear black or green or all one color. Easy with the black stuff. I don't think it's actually as easy as you think with the black well, stuff. I think they're going through a lot. And there's clearly someone black right in front of you. Yes. And you threw it out there like he wasn't there. And you wanted me to make sure that uh, he wasn't hiding us. <sighs> that you didn't want him, the black man, to take center stage. Why is it that you don't want a black man to take center stage? Because I want a Tyrannosaurus Rex to have a chance. To want a Saurus Rex is to want a Saurus Rex. I think you did a good job. I think you did an okay job. Pun intended. Job. Job. Steve Jobs. There's a lot of cobwebs on here. Is that from the Halloween decoration? Wow, I didn't expect to get some uh, Jurassic abuse. All right, so your mom gave you a... Yeah. ...printed something out for you on a nice thing. Well, you, you were talking about kindness. Yes. And my mother gave me this when I was a young man. My mother, Lorraine O'Donnell. Can I read it? Do you want to read it? Yeah. Okay, but this is something she gave me that's sort of a treasured memento from my mother. Of course. And it sort of is how I live my life, and maybe it, it helps well, let's answer, hear you read it. answer the question. You could read it. I'd like to hear it in your voice, actually. You do? Yeah. Well, I offered it to you, but it's up of to course, you. Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is from my mother. Did she write it, or is it something? No, it's an old Irish, I think. Where her, her maiden name was O'Donnell, so I think it's sort of an Irish thing. Right. And this uh, plays into what you were saying about maybe the kindness attributes that you... Uh, yeah. I be the road of life. Should I do it in an Irish uh, accent, mm-hmm. since it's... I be the road of life. Yeah. I be the road of life. I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any fellow creature, let me do it now, for I shall not pass this way again. That's great. Do you want to read it in your voice? Because I think the Irish thing didn't really... I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do or any kindness I can show. All right, easy, Dracula. I didn't say do it in a Transylvanian bloodsucker voice. I expect to pass through this world. Okay, that's Australian guy. This is my mother saying, and you're doing it. I feel like I'm I'm at IHOP. I haven't heard this many dialects since uh, Carol uh, O'Connor got fired from. (laughs) Come on, dude, land it. God, I couldn't land it. Isn't that nice, though? It is, yeah. Oh, pardon me. So that's yeah. sort of, uh, you know, that's kind of my thing. I have something on my refrigerator that my mom gave me once. It's much shorter, but it says, be kind, be silly, be honest. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. It's simple, straight those are, to the those point. Those are the ones. 
Those are the ones. You could be honest and kind at the same time. And also, just yeah. be silly. Be playful. That's yeah. nice. She says, your mother's still with us? Mm -hmm. God. She's great. You want me to call her? Uh, sure. I mean, if you really want to show up, my mother. I we don't have to. I no, do. no, go ahead. Call her, please. Is, uh, is, I'd it, like to verify that this thing even exists on your fridge now. I'm starting to wonder a little bit. Hello? Oh. Hi. Mommy, I have you on a podcast with my friend Harlan, and I was telling him about a magnet that you gave me that says, be kind, be silly, be honest. Do you remember buying me that? Yes. Yes, I sure do. What? I also remember buying you one about I love to poop. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Whoa. I'm on the podcast now and I can't edit this. Now. Whoa, okay. <laughs> uh, That's right. This is podcast. Hey, Harlan, I love you. You're so funny. Well, see, you were right. Yeah, Thank I you. I was talking about how, how loved Harlan is. Mom, will you tell me, be <sighs> silly, be kind, be honest, what that means to you? Well, it just means that you have a light heart when you're, well, being kind to me is the main thing in anything in life. I just think if you're kind, you then Harlan it takes care of almost everything. You know what, Mom? Harlan actually uh, just read something that his mom had given him. It's, a, it's an old Irish tale. It's, well, uh -huh. uh, I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do or any kindness that I can show to any fellow creature, let me do it now, for I shall not pass this way again. You want to know something? Your mom and I, we would be best friends. Oh, is that my mom's no, voice? I'll tell you something. Yeah. Kindness, kindness is, um, takes care of everything. When you're kind, it, it's the best thing in a marriage. It's the best thing in a relationship. It's the best thing with neighbors. There's nothing more about when you're kind, you're loyal. When you're kind, you're honest. When you're kind, you're thoughtful. I mean, being kind is everything. And then, of course, there's silly, which makes you a jolly, happy person, which is what we are. And then um, was the other one about I, I love to poop? What was the third one? <laughs> yeah, that was it. Be, be kind, be silly, and poop. No, be honest. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, mother loving fuck the coop. Honest, of course, you gotta be honest, and I'm honest that I do love to poop, so I guess it all works out. All right, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm watching my third Hallmark movie of the day since Daddy's home with COVID, so I'm uh, really in a deep, deep trance here. All right. Well, do you want to ask Carlin anything about what it was like to work with Jim Carrey? Oh, is he the best? Oh, from Dumb and Dumber. That's right. Isn't he just, like, brilliant? What do you think, Harlan? Uh, well. Harlan's feeling a little shy right now. I get nervous around your mother. Mom, do you remember when we were in Palm Springs and we watched Rocket Man? Yes. Earlier this year. Uh, yes, You I did? Know. That's the I guy. Harlan that's Harlan. You know that's him, right? I know. I know exactly who Harlan is. He's a hysterical man. He's sitting right next to a Rocket Man. Is he? Yeah. Was the I like to poop a magnet on the toilet, or was that where no, on the where, fridge? Why was it on the fridge? Mom and well, I talk about poops that, a lot. You know, see, you know, Ricky's entire conversation with me when he calls is usually how his bowel movement of the day went. Oh God! Yeah, we have a very, very uh, close uh, hygienal relationship. Well, I don't know if I would say that. I, 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 a lot of the only arguments you and I ever have is how quickly you wash your hands. So. Okay, all right, so maybe I'm not as hygienic as you, but we can talk about our bathroom. Mom. All right, uh, yeah, babe. Um, I was going to ask you something. What was I going to okay. ask her? I don't oh, know. Mom, why do you, why do you, sh shut up, I'm asking you something. You might have to edit around that. I'm sorry, Mom. No, I think we're going to okay. keep that in. Mom, why do Jews have big noses? We don't have big noses. I have a very small nose. Your brother has a very small nose. But Eastern Jew, Eastern uh, uh, European people, the, the it's like you know every ethnicity has its own ethnicity. She visual, said ethnicity. Visual things, and a lot of Eastern European people have more defined noses. Mom always but talks about poops, and she also talks European. She likes to talk about poops and European. Yeah. Mom, I said the Jews have big... How does, he, how does he have you on his podcast? You sound like you're five. What the... Oh, yeah. I think that's okay. the way I was feeling. Well, you know what, honest. Mom? 
I think Jews oftentimes do have big noses, and that's so they could smell all the bullshit. And I'm calling bullshit right now. I'm not five. I have a learning disability, and I'm I'm just I have some you know I have some social weaknesses, but they've also some of them have become social strengths. So just because you have a small nose and you don't wash your hands for a long time and you love taking wet poops, you know my mom. I'm really a charming person and I'm not dirty. I know one said you're dirty. You just don't really wash your hands long enough. All right. Bye, Mommy. Oh. Love you. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Harlan. Bye. Happy holidays. That's my best friend right there. Wow. Do you really phone her every day and talk about your movements? No, but, but, no, but uh, our family, not just me and my mom, but our family in general, like uh, we talk about bowel movements. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I feel like that's the first question you actually wanted an answer to. <laughs> it really is, but it, I don't know that I really want the answer. Well, while we're talking about Jews, yeah, there is something in Jewish culture, two things that aren't necessarily connected. One is, um, do you know the Yiddish term kvetch? Mm-hmm. Which is like complaining. Oh, I thought it was someone throwing a stick for a dog that had no, a that's list. that's fetch. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Kvetching. It's kvetching. It's complaining. And okay. a lot of times with, uh, and it's not just in Jewish culture, but it's a big part of it, um, is uh, kvetching. It's complaining. Is It's kind of, I consider complaining a love language. Like, oh, my stomach hurts or it's hot or I'm tired. Like, it's not saying, oh, it's not, to me, when done a certain way, isn't necessarily negative. It's just connecting on like, ugh, I know. Right? Right. Ugh. Yeah. And one of uh, also separately, a lot of times genetically, Jewish people don't necessarily have the best uh, digestion or stomachs. You hear a lot of Jewish people they get stomach aches or they get gas Why? or they have allergies. A lot of Jewish people, black people, and Asian people don't digest milk well. It's true. Well, I was gonna do it, but so the fact that we like to complain and also there's off. I have some issues with my bowel movements sometimes. Although I found some magnesium complex that's been working great for me. But yeah, so sometimes when we're talking how you doing, I'll be like, I, one of the things like you check in, I didn't really take a good poop today, which means I'm not in a great mood. Oh. You ever have a day where you don't poop or you don't have a good poop and you're like, if I could just poop, I would be in a better place. How's your mood today? My mood today is all right. Okay. Yeah, this magnesium complex is, is, is working well. Great. What's the rent? Uh, buddy, are you ready for words from a wooden shoe? You yeah, know we do that every part. We yeah. do. Is this your favorite part? Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. You know how it works, guy. We get the old wooden clog from from the Dutch place. Yep. And you reach in, you pull, pull one on board, and then you, you tell, tell us a story, story from, from your life or you were using your wife. the word. Yeah. Here we go, gang. Theft. Oh, here we go. Talk to me. Theft. Yeah. Let's sure. Yeah. Sure. So um, I've stolen things two times in my life. I remember them Ooh, both. Okay. First one? Uh, the story I want to tell you is the second one, but I'll tell you the first one, just okay. a little backstory. Just as a setup. The first one uh, was uh, from a drugstore near me. Okay. When I was growing up, and kids were stealing stuff. I was with these kids. I didn't have that many experiences where I was with other kids. Yeah. So I guess you could call it peer pressure, but also I did it. Okay. Uh, and they were stealing some stuff, and I'm like, I will. And I stole something. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a, a something by the counter, like a gum or something like, okay. uh, like something that was little. And I potentially, like, I want to take the cheapest, littlest thing. Right. Um, and uh, didn't like the way I felt after. And, and uh, Oh, because you needed to take a movement first? I take it back. I remember three steals, but one of them I gave back right away. The other, another steal, which is not this story, was okay. uh, I was saving up for Game Boy. Oh, I don't know how God. old I was, but I'm going to make, let's say, 10. Okay, yeah. And, um, Did you ever think about saving up for straight boy? Okay, that's actually not bad. Not bad at all. Fuck. Just a quick one. Uh, and uh, I would, you know, I would do chores or I'd do little things or I used to sell stuff. I used to, there was this thing called Olympia Sales Club. I still remember the number, one eight hundred three seven three five nine six three. And you would get a catalog mailed and you go door to door selling stuff. And yeah. you could either get points for a prize or each item you sold, you could get $2. Or get seduced by a MILF. 
I'm telling you a real story, man. This is really, okay. really well, I was serious. To make it more. Well, sexual. that never happened, and I don't okay. want to make well, anybody that I grew up like with feel bitter. like they. Sounds well, like I don't want to. I don't want to me to somebody and have it not be true. Well, the fact you didn't get lured into a house by a beautiful older woman because I could in smell lingerie. the bullshit. Because I could smell yeah, the bullshit. But what else do you smell? Clams. The pu- eh. You get the smell. The so pu- I had eh. this thing of change, and yeah. I, was, I, I was fifty dollars away from the Game Boy, and I, uh, I remember I went. My, my parents were asleep, and I, my brother and I were playing games in the basement. And I went, and I found on Dad's counter $50 bill, and I took it. And I, my brother was helping me count the change of how close I was. And I said, does this help? And it was 50 and I was almost there. And then the next day, I told my mom. I said, I took this from Dad, because Dad was at work. And took like, or him. stole? Stole. Yeah. And I gave it right back. But uh, the other one, the one that stopped me from stealing. Yes. Hear this oh, one uh, was so I'm at day camp, oh, um, wow. and I don't know how old again, but I don't think I'm even a teenager yet. Where'd you go at night? Uh, it's just home. It was just camp just during the day. So then you went to night camp? No, I guess that was me at home watching, you know, watching TV by myself. So there was day camp, but at night no more camp. Right, day camp was like a school in the summer, but you went to camp. So there was no tents. I mean, part of camping is you sleep over right. in a tent. Yeah, it wasn't like camping out. It was just camp where you do like sports and activities. Can you just say you were at school and not make it all dramatic by but throwing the word camp? camp? Well, not it was. really. It was. Was there a tent? Yeah. Oh, there was now. Yeah, well, I, you didn't sleep in the tents, but there, 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 were, there were cabins. Was there a bonfire? I think there, were, there might have been bonfire stuff sometimes. Was there a grizzly bear? No. You weren't camping. Well, I Asshole. I was waiting by where the cars come to pick you up. Okay. And there was this some of the things you do, people do crafts. And have you ever okay. seen those things where they take like jars and they fill it with different colors of sand and you take a toothpick and you make designs and stuff? Absolutely. So somebody made one of those things. Some sand craft? A sand craft. I, I still look back thinking, I can't believe I did this. But I took it. So it, 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 the kid was not there anymore, or it was left, or I don't know, but it definitely wasn't mine. You stole the jar of sand. Yeah, I don't remember. Did I take it like it was sitting next to somebody, or did I find it like somebody forgot it? I don't remember, but it, it wasn't just about the fact that I took something that wasn't mine. I also got in the car, and my mom and her mom, uh, my grandma who lives in California, she has sure. since passed, but yeah. she was visiting, I remember, and they picked me up, and I said, look what I made. I said, look what I made. They said, it's so good. You took credit for the sand craft. Yeah, and I told them. I, to, I don't remember when. I don't remember if I told her in the car or if I told her days later. But You I, were in the car? Uh, Is that when your grandmother passed? I actually want to passed? call her back. Uh-uh. I want to call her back about this. Well. I do. Okay. I want to, because I think my mom told me she, even after I told her it wasn't mine, she kept it for a little bit. What was the design in the sand? Hello? Mom, I'm telling Harlan about the time I at camp I stole that sand art, and I, I, I was in the car with Grandma and you, and I gave it to you, and I said I made it. Horrible. I know. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. But... It was, okay, well, you made a sand art, and I said how beautiful it was, and I was so proud of you, and we brought it home, and then you came to me later on very upset to confess that you really didn't make it, that you took it from someone. Yeah, and didn't you tell me that you still kept it for a little bit? I kept it for a long time. I hid it. Why? Because I was waiting to see what you wanted to do with it. <laughs> well, I, was, I would love if, if I could have it. Do we still have it? No, Ricky, I don't think we have it. I think, what were you, six, seven? Do you, I don't know. I thought it was closer to ten. Do you think this is a good time no. to tell your mother no, about the No, but I wanted gum? to know if you wanted to return it or whatever, but I then think, you said, you know, you know I, were afraid to I've return it. I've everything I've ever done. He stole gum. <laughs> Mom, so he, we pulled... What? Go ahead. We pulled a thing called theft, and you wanted me to tell a story, and I, I remember I remember stealing three things ever. I remember uh-huh. the sandcastle. I remember when I was wanting to save up for a Game Boy, and I took a $50 bill off Dad's counter, and I told you guys the next day. Uh-huh. And then once I stole something from the... Um, from uh, uh, I don't want to say the name of the place, but a drugstore right. by us on, on although the circle. They, uh, although they did, they are out of business, so they'll never know. Yeah, but still. But yes, well. but but um, but you repented and you've never lied nor stolen since. Honest, be honest, be kind, be silly. 
Yep. But you're yep. a kid. You got to learn. You take something. You think. You don't realize what you're doing. But I learned, right, oh, Mama? I, I know. I mean, I'm, we've all done something. I mean, what's the worst all... thing you've ever done? Oh yeah, let me put that on a podcast. All right. <laughs> Anything you want to plug? Yeah, love you. All right, love you, bye. I guess we could plug my brother's restaurant, The Greyhound, in Highland Park and in Glendale. If you're in Los Angeles and you want some of the best cornbread you've ever had. I don't know if I want to eat on a bus. No, it's just, no, the Greyhound, it's uh, it's actually a drink. I think Greyhound is grapefruit juice and some, what is the Greyhound drink? Grapefruit juice and gin mixed over ice. Oh, I was going to say something else. What? Fuck off. Okay. Um, Buddy, what? Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Uh, buddy, before we glow... Will you tell the folks where they can see you, where they can watch your wonderful podcast, where they can see you do stand-up comedy? Please tell the folks. Well, just, you know, my Instagram, my TikTok, it's all just Rick Glassman. My YouTube, it's Rick Glassman. Tell them about your podcast. Podcast is at youtube.com slash Rick Glassman. It's all Rick Glassman. And it's for, called, for those Take Your Shoes Off and... Uh, 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 your visits, both of them, are, are fan favorites. My One of my favorite things I've done on the podcast was your second appearance when we called Lamorne. I don't know if you remember. Oh. But then we ended up walking out, and he was just doing voices oh, and not yeah. knowing we were gone for a while. Yeah. That was fun. And We have folks, a good time, you and I, huh? We have a good time, and if you have any doubt about his podcast, when I got up to leave, I think you saw what he could do with the podcast format. Mm -hmm. And uh, go see his podcast. What's it called again? Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. Thanks for having me, Harlan. Are you clitting me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, this is uh, this has been Rick Glassman. Check him out. Check out his podcast. Go. You should end every episode where what? Bill Maher is playing the next few weeks, the way he does at the end of Real Time. Oh, I should plug Bill Maher's gigs? Yeah. Go see Bill Maher. He's playing at Caesars Palace in Vegas and at Morty's Funeral Home in uh, Delaware. Okay. Uh, folks, this has been uh, Rick Glassman. And until next time, everybody, on the Holla Highway Podcast, Chicken Chow Mein. Thanks for having me, and thanks for watching. I didn't say baby. I always say chicken, chicken chow, chow mein, mein baby, baby. and Sorry, then you, you stepped ahead, on it. Ahead. Chicken Chow Mein, baby. That sounds like an Arnold Schwarzenegger, like an alternate take. Your hair is not dry yet. You better put your hat back on. All right, welcome to the bonus bacon. As I said, this is a, an interview situation where I literally just call myself on, a, on another phone line and I interview myself as these fun characters. So I uh, hope you like this crazy little interview. Um, I love doing these. And uh, there, it's something I used to do a lot on my old Harland Highway podcast when it just used to be audio. And I really miss doing these characters. I love doing them. And a lot of the fans of the old format of the Harland Highway missed them too. So I'm trying to incorporate them more into this one. Uh, and even though it's just audio, hopefully you'll enjoy this sort of theater of the mind. And without further ado, let's get right to World War III with Tom Dowdy. Well, the world is clearly, truly in a, in a state of chaos. Um, what's happening in the Middle East... Um, the, the fighting, the wars, uh, other countries threatening to c come into it, other com uh, countries getting involved, and, and many are saying we're on the, the, the doorstep of World War III happening, which is a terrifying uh, situation for the world to be in. And many in, in this day and age can't really wrap their head around the concept of a global world war especially here in North America and other, uh, you know, westernized cultures where we, we get up every day and wrap our arms around our Starbucks and our Walmarts and our McDonald's. And we sort of think of wars happening over there or somewhere else or to other people. But uh, 
when a when a world war starts, everybody sort of gets involved. That's why it's called a world war. And I don't think many of us are equipped psychologically, emotionally to deal with it. And so we thought it would be uh, appropriate to bring on board uh, someone who does know war, someone who has spent time in the theater of war on many, on many uh, fronts. And that is uh, someone who we talk to on the phone regularly here at the Harland Highway. Uh, he's a military expert. He's a decorated soldier. And I'm talking about uh, uh, Captain... Uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor, uh, d- d- Department of Security, uh, uh, Colonel uh, Tom Dowdy from of the U.S. military, and uh, I think we have him on the line. And uh, let's uh, let's say hello to him and talk to him about the 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 looming potential of a World War Three. Uh, maybe he can help us get our heads around it. Uh, are you there, uh, Sir Lieutenant Colonel, uh, uh, Staff Sergeant, uh, Lieutenant uh, Commander T- Tom Tom Dowdy? Are you there, sir? Uh, hello, citizen. Uh, you are a go. Uh, pardon me, sir. You heard me. I don't like to repeat myself. You are a go, sir. Uh, 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 yes, sir. A go. Uh, let let us discuss. Let's jump right into it. World War Three. Uh, w- oh my gosh, what what can you say? Can you comfort us? Can you advise us? Can you illuminate us? I can do whatever you want, civilian. I've been a decorated soldier that spent half my life in the service. You came to the right guy for the right information. Now put on your seatbelt, straighten your tampon, and get ready to go for a hell ride. Well, sir, that's a little crass. I mean... War is not pretty, civilian. If you want me to sit here and put a sundress on and put daisies in my hair and make little birdie noises, I can do that. But I don't think you called me to talk about Ring Around the Rosie. I think you specifically said you wanted to talk about the hell that is... Well, yes, sir. I guess you you sort of put me in my place there a little, and maybe I had it coming because yes, we do need to talk about this. And 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 to be honest, I'm I'm a little frightened. I think most of the listeners are frightened. And well, you should be. Let me tell you something about war, civilian. There's three letters in it. W is for what the fuck. All right. A is for asshole. And R is for rotten tomato <laughs> tamales. Were you were you gonna say rotten tomatoes, sir? I was, but I didn't want to endorse the movie critique website, so I said rotten tamales. Well, all those descriptive words you used definitely paint a picture of things that are distasteful, things we don't like, and that's exactly why I did it, civilian. War will leave a bad taste in your mouth. How so, sir? Have you ever woken up in a motel six in the morning? You've got pubic hairs in your teeth. There's a shit stain on the wall. And the bathtub's full of onion soup. Sir? Answer the question, civilian. No, I've never stayed in a motel six with with any of those circumstances. You will. Sir? You will. If World War III comes to your door, step. You're going to have more pubes in your teeth than a dragonfly that just flew through a fucking Chinese wig shop. <laughs> Sir, what a, a Chinese wig shop? You heard me, civilian. War is hell. Yeah, well, I think we all get that, sir, but I think what we really want to know is, is this a possibility with, with the affairs that are going on in the world across the globe? Are, are, do we have one foot in, in it right now? slipper on that foot. Whoa! And not only that, that Russian ballet slipper just danced through the park and slid through a big pile of Rottweiler shit. 
Sir, what? Can we stop with the salty references, please? Oh, here we go again. You want me to dress war up nice and pretty, huh? Well, la di da di da. Why don't I just run down to the local Walmart, buy seven or eight rolls of pretty old Christmas wrapper? Put your. <laughs> Sir? Put your face in a blender and wrap it up till it smells like a chicken. Sir, are you okay? Have you been drinking? I'll wrap your face up like a Chinese gopher just popped out of the earth. <laughs> Sir! Would, have, have you been... What is going on there? Yeah, maybe I had a few drinks. But when you know war is just over the hill... You're gonna get sauced up. Sir, it's eight in the morning. So suck a cucumber and boil me some shrimp, fuckface. Sir, can you stop with the <laughs> the, the salty language, please? I told you, war ain't pretty slim dim. Sir, if you could just elaborate more on on uh, on how we deal, how we cope with with this, it's 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 upsetting. It's it's. I think it's throwing people out of their rhythm. They're they're fear, fearful of the future. And so you should be. And so you should be. World War Three. I think we all knew it was coming from when we were little children. Well, that's a pretty kind of doomsday statement, sir. Think about it, civilian. When you were three years old. Outside of fucking rubbing dandelions on your little bald nutsack. Sir, can you stop with the references? What do you mean, what was I doing when I was a kid? What were you doing? I don't know. I was sitting in front of the television, probably watching Sesame Street. Bingo. And I believe the horror of war was instilled in you and all your little creepy perverted friends. When you were just three, four, five, and six years old, freak face. Sir, what what do you mean exactly we, World War Three was instilled in us? Think about Sesame Street. You think it's there by design or by accident? I, I'm not sure what you mean, sir. The powers of the American government run hard. They run deep. They run covertly, and they run on a psychological level that would make you burn your Nancy Drew books, rub the ashes all over your tits, and jump through a plate glass window at Cracker Barrel. Sir, have you been drinking? Jump through a plate glass window at Cracker Barrel? That's what I said, civilian. What does Sesame Street have to do with World War Three and all us growing up? What, what? What? I like the taste of blood. It wasn't Oscar the Grouch, that creepy green rag rag mop that lived in a garbage can covered with polio fleas. Well, sir. It wasn't Big Bird, that giant yellow freak with the crack cocaine eyes that bulged out of his head like he just sniffed someone's diaper behind a Denny's. Sir, please. I'm talking about the count. Oh, okay, yeah, the blood, the blood, okay, he was a vampire puppet. He was more than a puppet soldier. He was a plant. Wait, well, what do you mean, sir? He was a covert plant placed there by the United States military when Sesame Street started back in 1974. Wait a minute, sir, what are you suggesting here? Well, he counted. Start counting, civilian. W what do you mean? Start counting down the world wars. Sir? That's an order. Oh, so, okay, sir. Uh, world War One. Uh, 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 uh. Sir? 
sir, what was that? Keep going, civilian. Oh, oh, World War II. Uh, 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 Sir, what are you doing? I'm not finished. Uh, 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 uh. What are you doing, sir? Do you recognize that laugh? That laugh? Wait. Wait, is that the count? Wait a minute, sir. Are you saying that... Keep fucking counting, you Dairy Queen sniffing, grass-fed ballerina boy. Sir, can we stop with the names? I said keep fucking counting. <sighs> World War... Say it. Sir... Sir! Say it. World War... Say it. Three. Ah, 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 Sir, we get it. The count from Sesame Street. Why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing the laughing? What I'm trying to tell you, civilian, if you can take the time to take the wax out of your ears and make a candle shaped like a dildo shove it up your nose, you'd understand. World War Three has been in the making since before you were born. Wait, what? You think mankind, you think the civilized world just keeps on skipping through the field, sniffing the daisies and eating the candy floss? Sir? No. The world revolves around war. Wait, what are you saying, sir? Wait a minute, sir. This is a little bit... You're getting a bit deep here. Think about it. The Industrial Revolution. Boom. Came right after a war. Dr. Scholl's... Sir? Dr. Scholl's foot powder. Boom. Came right after a war. Sir, wait a minute. Everything changes after a war. The economy. Industry. Technology. Do you know how many technological advances came out of Nazi Germany? Do you know how many technological advances came out of the United States? Because war, war forced men to think. War forced men to chase away the things they didn't understand. War forced men to find new solutions. You see where I'm going here, civilian? Sir, in a way, I, I, scarily enough, I think I do. I, what, what you're saying is when there's a war looming and, and humans are in a place where they could perish, maybe become extinct or destroyed, they dig deep and they find solutions and they build weapons and they build technology and they do what they have to do to, to fight back, to surround themselves with the weaponry they need to survive. Bingo. Now here I was thinking you were just another scarecrow standing in a field of corn, playing with a Rubik's Cube and rubbing mayonnaise on your ass crack. But it looks like you figured it out, civilian. Well, I don't know if I feel more scared or, or more... I don't know what I feel after talking to you. That's because war is confusion. War is designed to destroy any rational thought. War is designed to eliminate... Whoa, sir. Uh, I, I think I'm more scared now than when we, when we first started talking. Civilian. War isn't a party. 
War isn't blowing out birthday candles. War isn't playing pin the tail on the donkey. War isn't putting on your mother's nightgown, covering yourself in relish, and jumping around in a graveyard until your balls start to bleed. War is hell. God, sir, I... I, I feel like the 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 the, 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 the Spit it out, fuck nard. That that this is this this has been more haunting than it than it was re- relieving. You better make sure we don't go to war. I'll be in my bunker watching TV. I'll be in my bunker eating Pringles. I'll be in my bunker stroking my bald cat. And I'll be in my bunker making foot on the ceiling with honeydew melon juice on the bottom of my fucking feet. Sir, what does that mean? You tell me, David and Goliath lips. Sir, uh, I think maybe... World War Three. Do the laugh. Sir? Do the laugh. I, the, the count... Sir, I'm not about... World War Three. Ah, 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 ah. Keep going. Ah, 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 ah. Keep going. Longer. Sir? Keep going. Ah, 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 ah. Sir, what is the heavy breathing all about? Keep laughing, you really uh, Ah, 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 ah. I'm almost there. Sir, I'm hanging up. This is horrible. Don't you hang up. I haven't finished. Ah, ah, what? No. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, sir, stop it. Uh, 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 uh. Well, sir. What the f- Whoa. What the H? All right, that was seriously creepy. Um, wha- Wow. Well, there you go, folks. World War Three, looming. And according to Lieutenant Colonel left Staff Sergeant Tom Dowdy. It's all been in the works. We've all been groomed since we were little kids through Sesame Street. No. Uh, 